Okay, perfect. All right. So today's webinar topic is specifically designed for project managers. And the, the title that I put together is Empowering Templates for the Overloaded Project Manager. So basically what I've done is I've done my best to connect with a bunch of different project managers who are currently succeeding with Priority Matrix. And I was able to kind of pick and choose from all that information that they were nice enough to actually share with me you know, what were the similarities across all of these project managers and, and how they're using priority matrix. And with that information, I was able to create priority matrix templates. So the idea for today's webinar is I'm going to share with you some of the custom templates that I've created, again, based off of specific feedback from project managers. And I can actually export these templates and share them with you and you can import them into your own priority matrix to make getting started super easy. I'm going to go over all that information in detail with you, but again, today's webinar topic is empowering templates for the overloaded project manager. So I have a short presentation put together for you all. I think it's just about, you know, six or seven slides just to kind of give you this introduction, and then we'll dive into the actual demo. So what are the goals for today's webinar and what does the agenda kind of look like? I want to go over together some of the current challenges faced by a project manager. Again, I've done my best to kind of gather information firsthand from project managers using Priority Matrix and use all that feedback to kind of fuel my webinar today. With that being said, disclaimer, I'm definitely not um, a full on expert of project managers and you know, I 100% can admit that I don't know the, the ins and outs exactly of what your day looks like. So with that being said, I've done my best today to put together helpful information about project managers and priority matrix. But if you're like, you know, thinking of something on your side that you think I can improve for my, for my next presentation or just suggestions, information, I would love to hear all of that. This is actually the first time I'm doing a webinar on this topic, so any feedback you can share with me um, helps us all out down the line. I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of a day in the life of a project manager. We're gonna look at how Priority Matrix can help and how project managers are currently using Priority Matrix. Next up, we're gonna look at the templates I created, um, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the short demo. I expect this to take about 15, maybe 20 minutes, probably not quite that long. Um, and then at the end, we're gonna do a Q&A and I'm actually gonna share with you the resources you can expect to get from me in a follow-up email to help you kind of carry on this path of using my templates. So hopefully that looks good to you all. Now we can kind of, you know, get past this intro phase and start looking at the information here. So what are common challenges of a project manager when they're not using priority matrix? And hopefully we have some PMs on the call today. And, you know, most likely I'm guessing that this can actually resonate with you quite well. So some of those challenges include a lack of communication um, and a lack of clear goals. Those can both kind of come from not having a central system to work together you know, share updates and basically share expectations for the project. We have set unrealistic deadlines. This can come into play when you don't have a, kind of a, a timeline tracking system where you can use a Gantt chart, kind of lay out the duration of each project and each task and an alignment with budgeting allowance. Maybe the project manager has allocated a bunch of resources to get this project done on time, but then the budgeting team comes in and it, you know, somehow there was a major unalignment with that, which fortunately is probably bound to slow down the project. So when you use priority matrix, you are actually able to collaborate with your own team. Not only that, you can actually collaborate with different departments as well. So that can absolutely help keep everybody on the same page. And lastly, just kind of a general lack of accountability. So we kind of all know how it goes during a meeting Maybe we talk about X, Y, and Z that will get done, you know, kind of vocalize some other things that our teammates are working on. But at the end of the day, if there's not a system to have a, a sort of accountability and follow up with each other, things do slip through the cracks. Um, and, you know, you guys definitely aren't alone if that's happening to you. 
that's why Priority Matrix is such a success because we do help people with these common challenges. All right, so what does a day in the life of a project manager typically look like? Again, based off of my research and my meetings that I was able to conduct with project managers using Priority Matrix, I started to understand that the first bit of the day, a, a common term is kind of eat the frog, meaning project managers have so much on their plate, they have to get so much done during the day. And in order to ensure that they're able to get the top priority things done without running out of time, they oftentimes tackle that right at the beginning of the day. The next thing that consumes a lot of a project manager's time is group meetings, making sure the projects are finishing on time, collaborating with different departments, stakeholders, external collaborators. Group meetings, I think it, I saw a quote that it took up like 60 or 70 percent of a project manager's day. The next thing that they have to do is actually get in there, manage those projects and you know, connect with the people who are working on those projects, make sure all questions are answered and everybody's ultimately on the same page. Lastly, they can kind of try to relax at the end of the day, you know, rest assured that everything is on track and then repeat the next day. Um, so again, ho hopefully this can kind of resonate with the project managers on the meeting today. Um, and everything that we are looking at here, especially group meetings, I'm going to show you a really cool functionality that Priority Matrix has to help you guys have shorter and more effective group meetings. So I wanted to take a second and just give a quick shout out to all the project managers out there. You all are the ones that keep keep things moving, keep projects, um, you know, kind of going along the track that they need to be on and you kind of keep everything together. So quick shout out to you all. Thanks for, you know, stepping into that role. The more I learn about it, the more I understand, honestly, just how difficult that position can be. So um, we all hear you in the sense that it's not an easy position to be in, but I hope that the information I can share with you today makes your day-to-day -day just a little bit easier. All right, so priority matrix to the rescue. What do I mean by this? What I'm gonna show you today during the kind of live demo presentation part of this is how you can save time with our pre-created templates. I believe that I've set up, um, I think I've set up five templates and I'm gonna go into detail on three or four of them today. Those are simply templates that I created myself. On our website, appfluence.com, we have 89 pre-created templates that you can actually just import super easily. And I'll tell you more all about that. Uh, I'll tell you more about all of that. You can import and you can actually customize these templates as needed. So if you see a template that I'm using today, but you know that you wanna modify it just a little bit, you can absolutely do this. And with all that being said, when you do use either my templates that I've made, something from our website, or your own customized templates, you're really able to start um, standardizing and streamlining task tracking and project management. All right, so a quick kind of look at what templates I've created that we're going to go over today. And then next up, we're actually going to get into the demo section of this. So first and foremost, I understand that having a Gantt chart specifically with dependencies for kind of timeline planning is incredi incredibly critical for the project manager. So I've set up a template to reflect this. I'm also going to show you how you can collaborate with your teammates and people outside of your team as well. I'm going to highlight how you can work with external collaborators like those stakeholders, those contractors, all while staying in Priority Matrix. And I also want to show you how easily Priority Matrix makes file sharing. So I believe I was able to connect with three or four different project managers leading up to this presentation. And one specific template that everybody had without fail was a very packed project with important files. And um, that, that's why I found it so important to include that today. It's a pretty basic template, but um, just to kind of get that idea out there for you that you can definitely share and store important files in these templates. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the demo portion of this webinar. Again, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, I know that this 
probably isn't the most exciting thing you have on your schedule today, but I really hope that you do have some good takeaways and I can hopefully make your day today a little bit easier. All right, so for those of you who are brand new to Priority Matrix, I'm going to hop in pretty quickly and we're going to start looking at these different templates. But before I do this, I want to make sure that we're kind of all on the same page with what's on my screen. So I'm using Priority Matrix through the Teams application for the duration of this demo. I would say that's probably where, I don't know, 85 or 90% of our users do like to use Priority Matrix these days. If you're not a Teams user, don't worry. You can download the desktop application like I've got down here, or you can use the web app, which will be identical to the Teams integration. And personally, that's where I spend most of my time working is through the web app or the Teams integration. So I have Priority Matrix open, and I have it pinned here just so it always kind of stays put. And if I click somewhere else, I don't have to re relocate it and open it. So what's on my screen here? Priority Matrix gives you a space to create projects that represent all the major things that either you're working on personally or as a project manager, most likely this information is shared with your teammates or those external collaborators. So I want you all to understand that when you create a project, you don't have to share it with anybody. And in fact, it's not automatically going to be shared. So the reason I say that is because for our new users here on the webinar, I really want you to feel comfortable to be able to get in here and test it out without having a concern that people can see what you're working on. It's up to you to decide when and who you would like to share these projects with. So what do I have set up here for us today? The big theme of this presentation is looking at how you can either use my templates that I built for you or create your own templates. So kind of starting from scratch, walking you through a little bit of functionality, and then we'll dig into the templates that I've created. When you hit add project, this is how you will either go about creating a blank project which you can then save as your own custom template, which I'll definitely show you in detail in just a minute, or down here where it says my templates. These are actually gonna represent the templates that you've already personally created or your teammates have shared with you. So these are the custom templates that your team is likely using. Right over here, when I could click on public templates, these are the 89 different templates that I was telling you about. You can actually click on it and you can import them directly into your priority matrix. So that's really neat. It, it makes getting started super easy with priority matrix. All right, so backtracking here, back to kind of my project list and the templates that I've created. So one of the, the large themes that I started to understand about project management, like I mentioned previously, is the importance of setting up a Gantt chart with dependencies. So I'm going to open up this product development project. A couple of things I want to point out right off the bat. So I have shared this project with my team members, which is really great because now this becomes that central space where we're able to collaborate and make sure that the project development phase, or rather the product development phase, is all kind of aligned with you know what we think needs to be done first and what can be kind of set on the back burner. I also want to point out in terms of templates, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you're creating your personal template. So you'll see in this case the quadrant names. I want you to look at those, but look on the right hand side because this is where you actually rename the quadrants to be specific for your needs. So each template you can cr you create can be you know completely unique in the sense that you can set up the quadrants to be the perfect fit for your project. Really easy to rename. You'll just do that over here on the right hand side. So when you're setting up your custom template and you're like, okay, you know, all I need to do is just rename the quadrants, and that's going to be helpful for me to have kind of ready to go every time I start a new project similar to this. That is perfect. What you'll do when you're ready to save a project as a template is just go to the right hand side and simply click save project as template. It's it's honestly as easy as that. Another thing I want to point out, though, is the fact that you can add so much detail to these templates 
if there's a process you have to take every single time you start a new product development or every single time you start a project with a new stakeholder and you take the same steps one through 10 every single time as a project manager, like I've done in this example, I've gone in and I've added several action items to this template. And you'll see when I open up an item, I've even gone as far as delegating it to a specific person. And for each one of these items, I've set a start date and a due date. So with all that being said, when I saved my project as a template, if I were to skip forward, let's say a month and a half, and I opened this project again as a template, basically I went to new project and opened this template, it's going to number one, automatically share that project with everybody who I've shared this project with already. It's also going to go ahead and it's going to actually delegate these items to the people that I've assigned them to in this template. Most importantly, in my opinion, is the start date and the due dates and any reminders you have are going to automatically update to represent the current date. So if it's March 1st and I open this template, this would be a start date of you know March 1st and then six days later it would be due. So it all updates in real time. You don't have to worry about updating any of the start dates or due dates. So that's kind of, you know, a lot of stuff they need to understand about the project templates is you can stay kind of as lightweight as you want if you just want to rename the quadrants and save that template or you want to get in and completely fill it out, even go as far as delegating items. You're good to go with that. The templates will save exactly as you create it. The purpose of this specific template, and again, I just kind of use product development as a, an example because I think it might be relatable for a lot of us on the call today, but I want you to keep in mind in terms of using the priority matrix scan chart, which is what I just opened up. I'm going to zoom out a little just so we can kind of see how this is laid out. If you're thinking right now on your side of the screen, well, I don't necessarily deal with product development as a project manager. My you know, kind of day-to-day -day looks a little bit different. That's perfectly fine. Um, just keep in mind that you can create a template where you basically have your uh, Gantt chart or timeline completely built out. So here we can really easily see the duration of each task that I put into this project. And what's really cool is Priority Matrix now supports dependencies. So when I move this task up here, we can very easily see how it's gonna delay every single related item. Same goes for the last one. The final step here is, you know, share this with your stakeholders to review for feedback. If the second to the last step here gets delayed, we can only imagine that it is gonna delay the final step. So when you actually go in to set up your dependencies, it's very easy to do this. You're gonna go to resources. You're gonna go to link item. You're going to be able to choose the item that it is related to, and you can choose the relationship. So I'm going to say it's blocked by, and then we'll say planning phase. So let's see if I set this up correctly. If you ever need to modify it, you can just click on this little pencil icon and you can change the dependency that you've created. So as you can see, there's a lot of different relationships you can set up between your items. But the big idea here is number one, set up a template for whatever recurring step-by-step -step you have to do with dependencies, get it all set up, get it all good to go so you don't have to continuously recreate this template. If something changes down the line and you, for whatever reason, need to modify an item name or you know the kind of timeline that falls into place changes, you can update it. And then you can just simply save it as a template again and delete the old template that you had. So nothing is set in stone. You can continuously update these templates as needed. So the big takeaway from this template is the fact that we can get so in depth, really lay out every single thing we need to do and even view it on kind of the Gantt chart. And this will be ready for you time and time again, as long as you save it as a template. As I mentioned, I can export this for you all and you can kind of customize this and use this template to your liking if that would be helpful. The next example that I want to show you is key metrics for stakeholders. So as a project manager, you're not only overseeing the duration of this entire project and 
you know, working on it diligently, sitting in on meetings about it and managing your team. But you may also be in touch with the stakeholders, the people who are waiting for this project to be completed and counting on you to get it done on time. So what becomes really important in this aspect is having the ability to effectively communicate with those stakeholders. So what I've done here is I've set up a project key metrics for stakeholders. Again, this is another template that I can export and share with you. This one is a little bit less in depth. All I've done basically is I've created some quadrant names here. And again, you just go save project as template. Um, you could even rename this every time you open the template. You could say key metrics for and then actually put the company's name or the stakeholder's name. That's what I would definitely suggest doing. But what I wanted to show you in terms of this specific template is kind of crossing into another topic of a webinar that I'm going to be doing on Tuesday the 15th. But I want to just quickly show you how easy it is to actually share this information with stakeholders on top of using a pre-created template. So I'm going to jump to a channel here actually. And I set up an example under product development, kind of going along with the theme that we're playing with. So what you can do if you have stakeholders or contractors in on a team's channel or chat with you, and you just want to say, hey, everybody, here's the metrics that we've set up for you all, kind of just passing on information to them. You can actually add projects to this channel in a read only mode. So if I were a stakeholder looking at this channel along with other people in this company actually working on this project, I can actually click on this item and I can see any notes and I can see the due dates as well. You'll notice that the stakeholders would also be able to see this in a Gantt chart view, calendar, and a list format. So again, this is a great way to say, hey, stakeholders, here's everything that we are going to make sure we get done for you, but they can't actually edit this. While we're on the channel together, I want to show you just one more option that I added which again, kind of, this kind of bridges into a different topic, but I think it's just as important as looking at templates, which is the idea that you can actually add collaborative projects to your channels. So if you have a channel for your product development team and you guys are working on a couple projects together, definitely add the priority matrix projects to this channel so you don't have to flip flop back and forth from here, you know, down to the priority matrix full featured application. All right, so again, the big takeaway for this template is the fact that maybe every time you start a project with a new company or a new stakeholder, you have similar metrics or you at least have similar topics of quadrants you could use. Save that as a template and then every time you bring on that new project, you can rest assured you have at least the outline ready to get started working with those stakeholders. All right, so looks like my filter went away. I'm gonna just apply that again to keep us focused here. And kind of on a similar topic of sharing information with stakeholders, I also set up a template with the idea of timeline planning, which you could again share with your external collaborators, maybe their contractors or stakeholders, and you just wanna show them, you know, kind of the timeline that you guys are working on. That would again be another thing you could go in, set up that template and save it for yourself, but making it a little bit more specific to kind of what you and your team are working on. Lastly, in terms of templates that I'm really going to go into detail on is the idea that I mentioned in the presentation part of this webinar, which is the importance of having a great place to keep files and also share them. So when I open up this project, I call this important files for and then you could add your project name active files, pending files, and maybe files you're waiting on, and old files for reference. So I did definitely acknowledge that this is kind of a basic template. You know, it's not, not really mind-blowing or rocket science here, but I think it, a lot of us on this call can probably relate to the fact of digging through, you know, digging through your inbox, um, looking for files, not being able to find them, looking through multiple different platforms, if you just simply save this project as a template and use it and it actually upload files to items in this project. So we'll just say 
test item and then hit add, you'll see within each item, we can add resources being a place to add files and you can upload as many files as you need. In fact, you can actually link emails to these items as well. So create that central space and kind of recurring template that you use for each project to rest assured all of those important files will be there and easy for you to access. So you'll see that I also have a template set up here for budgeting. This would be the idea of actually working across teams and working across departments, which you can do in priority matrix. Again, a very simple template here, but it can really help people kind of stay on track and give you that space to work with another department without having to do it through emails. So kind of the idea with all of these templates is going along with the idea that most likely you're using recurring processes as a project manager, whether it's product development, metrics with stakeholders, something completely different that, that I might be really missing the mark on. Um, I want you to know that creating templates is really easy. It's absolutely one of the most common functionalities that people really like using. It saves them a lot of time. And imagine if you're using the same templates for uh, you know, even just six months or a year straight and you look back on the reports that we create and the metrics that you've been tracking, if you have that information standardized and it's the same across every new project, things get so much easier. It saves you so much time and it keeps hopefully everything in alignment as your projects move forward. Lastly, I promise this is the last thing I want to show you, but for a lot of you, it might be the most important thing. And then we'll get to the Q&A is I'm going to jump to my team's calendar here. So I've set up an example meeting for this webinar today. And at the very start of my presentation, I mentioned that Priority Matrix also has functionalities for all of you project managers out there that hope are hoping to have shorter and more effective meetings. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to set up your team's meetings as you would. Um, quick side note, when you want to test out the functionality I'm about to show you, just make sure you add at least one person. I've added Pablo here. He's um, he's our CTO. He's a great, uh, great sport because I'm always spamming him setting up for these webinars. Um, but anyways, make sure you add one person and then you'll see this little plus icon here at the top. I've went ahead and I've added agenda by priority matrix. You guys can add it all by clicking on that plus icon. But what happens is priority matrix looks across all of your shared projects. And this is not limited to just two people. If you have a team meeting, including those external stakeholders, you can still work, you can still create this agenda. And the system is going to create a little section for each person on this meeting who's using priority matrix. It's going to do its best to automatically create this meeting agenda for you. And these are real priority matrix items. So you might recognize these, which were from the templates that I showed you. So the idea is the system is saying, hey, Erica, here's everything that you most likely need to talk about with Pablo based off of your shared priorities and recently modified items. If for whatever reason, A, you need to look through kind of your um, knowledge base of priority matrix items, these are real items linking back to your projects where you can search for them and you can add the items that you may need to talk about during this meeting. You can also create new action items going as far as delegating them to somebody um, and also putting them into the correct project and quadrant and adding your deadlines. So it's a very collaborative meeting agenda. Each person is able to prepare this way. And when I hit join, if I were to actually go and join this meeting, this agenda is still gonna be there for us to look at where we can continue to provide updates such as, okay, this item is completed, we finished this one. Most importantly, during meetings, I've heard a project manager struggle with the fact that they talk about a lot of really critical, important items and they slip through the cracks because they're not actively being tracked in a, a system like Priority Matrix. So with that being said, keep in mind, pretending we're actually in the meeting you can continue to create new action items. So after the fact, there's no backtracking, there's no worrying that something was forgotten about. 
it has all been prioritized, delegated, and assigned a due date. So you can get back to work and not have to backtrack and spend your time trying to remember everything that you talked about during that meeting. The last thing that's really amazing about this is after the meeting ends, each person is going to get a follow up email talking about meeting minutes, highlighting everything that was modified and created during this meeting. So I know for a lot of executive assistants that can kind of fall on your shoulders and it's very time consuming to create and send that meeting recap email. Good news is that's no longer going to be on your plate because if you use agenda by priority matrix, it will be created for you. All right, so hopefully this all made sense in terms of, you know, how you can create templates, um, what you can kind of do in terms of those templates and also use these that I've created for you. So going back to my PowerPoint here, uh, just a quick little recap and then I'm going to open up the floor for a Q&A. So basically, as we look at templates can save you time and they can streamline projects by using recurring processes and not having to create them every single time. You can either create your own custom templates and share those with your teammates or use our pre-created ones that we made for you. With all that being said, you're not only limited, you're not rather you're not limited to using it these templates just with your teammates, but you can also standardize the projects that come into play with stakeholders by using, you know, the same template with every single stakeholder you have to work with. Granted, you may have to modify it slightly, but for the most part, you are likely following a similar process, so you might as well just make it into a template. Okay, so I really hope that this made sense. I know that that's just a ton of information about these templates, but at this time, I would love to hear any questions that you have. I'm looking at the participant list here, so feel free to actually just raise your hand and I can answer those for you. Or alternatively, you can drop them into the chat box if you're more comfortable with that. I'm going to keep an eye on all of you on my other screen here in case questions do come up. But in the meantime, I have a couple common questions that I want to go over. So. A lot of the times people ask, can I use priority matrix with external collaborators? We kind of already touched on this, but I want you all to understand that absolutely, yes, you can do this. Like I mentioned on uh, Tuesday the 15th, I believe it's at 1 p.m. Pacific time, I'm hosting a specific webinar about a new pricing model we have set up supporting people using priority matrix with external collaborators. In terms of support, our enterprise customers um, have access to one-on-one -on -one training sessions, customized webinars, and group training sessions. For everybody else, um, you do have access to training sessions kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. We have an incredibly well-built-out YouTube channel and knowledge base with dozens and dozens of videos that are constantly being updated. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm also continuously hosting webinars. I'm shooting for three or four per week. And so as you can imagine, that gives you the opportunity to cover a lot of topics. And even if you can't attend them, you can still register and get a follow-up email with the recorded webinar to watch at your convenience. The last question I typically get is, you know, how do I test this out? Is there any type of trial period I can use? Absolutely, yes, we do offer a free two-week trial. That's going to give you access to all of the functionalities in Priority Matrix, all of the training and support that you could possibly need to really get in there, test it out, and you know, make sure that this is the right system for you. So hopefully that you know maybe touches on some of the questions that you all may have on on your side. I'm still looking at the participant list here, and I don't see any questions coming up. So you know, ho hopefully that's a good thing. And that means that my webinar actually um, made sense and I was able to answer the questions for you. So I still have a little bit of time left if somebody does have a question come up, but if not, we can actually wrap up this webinar. I thank you all so much for joining and, um, you know, sticking with me to the very end. Again, I would love to hear your feedback, any pointers or suggestions that you might have. And with that being said, I'm going to send all of you a follow-up email um, with a link to my templates 
a PDF that explains how to actually use templates and create them and also my upcoming webinars to register for. So it'll be a packed email with a lot of information, but again, hopefully it's helpful. I want to be here to, you know, make it easy for you all to get started with Priority Matrix um, and be here to support you during that whole process. So thank you all for your time. I'm going to end this recording and close out of the webinar.